Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is the semifinals of the one day, well, one of the semifinals matches, the one day tournament for 2v2. This is going to be Sub and Yurga versus Anarchid and the Sponge with Anarchid and the Sponge. Probably, well, it should be interesting. I've, they're definitely playing well before, and I imagine they are going to be playing well now. So, let's see, tournament itself, we have seen. Yeah, Anakin the Sponge did well against Mugman and Mothmaster did lose a game. Sab and Yurka also lost a game to Silence and Randy, but Silence and Randy are very strong players. So Anakin the Sponge versus Sab and Yurka. And we also have Irie King Vistrichium versus Banana Eye and Banana King, which is already going on. And whoever wins those will move on to the finals. Whoever loses will move on to the bronze match. We'll be catching that when it happens. But for now, we are going to be having the match on Obsidian. Which is actually a fairly new map. I think I've shown it off before, but yeah, it's a fairly new map. It's mainly meant for 1v1, but I think it has enough metal for 2v2. I mean, Frozen Planet worked okay. It's definitely a... I think it's a 12v12 map. It's a fairly large map. And it's also really kind of cool. I mean, just look at it. Not to mention the background is awesome, but... I mean, look at the map itself. I mean, it's just... It has a lot of very steep cliffs. It's actually something I found in my experience that you can very nicely run units up the cliffs. It's kind of like Moon Q10X. You can run units up the cliffs and it's quite effective, forcing your opponent into an uphill battle and you end up winning that way. I managed one time to beat three, beat like 12 Glaze with three doing that. But I don't know if we're going to see that. I think probably what's going to happen given the shape of the map, given the shape of the start boxes, that in this case, Saab is going to go for air and Yurga is going to go for cloaky, maybe vehicles, while Anarchy is going to same thing, probably go for cloaky or air, and the sponge is going to be the one to go for, sorry, cloaky or vehicles, and the sponge is going to be going for air, but we'll see. This map, the back isn't that safe. You can pretty easily go around the back with glaives in order to raid behind them. And... Uh, apparently there's also supposed to be warp gates or something in this map, but I don't know if they exist. Certainly aren't present here, so I think that that's probably not something that's been either implemented yet or in this particular version. This is purely just terrain. But it looks like they're going... Okay, if the map... If it has to, if there are tra teleporters that are hidden, then we'll just change the map and start over. But anyway... Yep, air coming up from Saab, and... Let's see. The Sponge and Anarchid both building up early metal extractors, not going for the quick factory for... Who knows what reason. It's a weird choice. Not morphing either. And Yurga and... Yurga and Saab, okay, so Yurga going for Cloaky, Saab going for Aero, Saab going for Early Avenger, and let's see beyond that, he is going for Avenger followed by Shadow. Gunship coming up from Anarchid, the Sponge going for Cloaky, okay, now it's a bit more typical. Sponge getting Early Solar Collector next to Anarchid's Metal Extractor as well to help overdrive it a bit. While Anarchid continues to build up some defenses. Nice placement of Defender, by the way, that will block off a lot of the harassment that's going to come in. Not all of it, mind you, but a lot of it. Do I have... A lot of it is going to be blocked off by that. Now, Yurga is... On the other hand, not so well defended. Actually, neither Yurga nor Saab are that well defended. They aren't expecting to be attacked from the back. Not sure if they realize that you can be attacked from the back on this map, but you really can. It's something you got to be careful about. And it looks like Yurga is not going to take... Well, okay, he's going to take advantage of that in one case, but defenses have been well set up. Anarchid is prepared for harassment around the back. Black Dawn coming up from him as well, while... The Sponge built up a few Glaze, but really, they're focusing very heavily on... Oh, for goodness sakes. Like, everything's breaking today. They're focusing pretty heavily on this back here. Really, what the heck happened? Anyway, they're focusing pretty heavily on... Getting this Black Dawn up and running. The Glaive is actually not even being produced. Games and Defenders getting this Black Dawn. It's pretty much a one... It's pretty much an all-in Black Dawn strategy. We'll see how that works, but I I doubt it. Razor's Kiss already up. The Black Dawn only halfway to the base, and Avengers already hitting it. Black Dawns are not that quick, by the way. So Anarchid really doesn't have the best chance of getting through this. The Black Dawn needs to retreat, in fact. It, that is not going to work out too well. A Trident coming in to help it out. anti your Gunship. Definitely a good choice, but still, that's, that's kind of unfortunate. Jethro coming up for support, but it's... It's going to be tricky. I don't know how he's going to get in easily. If he manages to get into Saab's base and tear apart 
the wind generators with the Black Dawn. That could work. It looks like first off, he's going to try to get rid of these glaives, and that is not bad. Not great, but the Black Dawn took really no damage from that, so it's... Yeah, not the best, not the most efficient way of using the missiles. Another glaive goes down, and... Well, half the glaives are gone. They are retreating, that is one thing. He did route the glaives, if nothing else, so at the very least, Anarchid and the Sponge have a bit more breathing room. That's definitely a thing to have. It's definitely a useful thing to have. But at the same time, the Black Dawn... What are trying to... Yeah, it was trying to hit those Avengers, and that's not going to work out. And actually, the Black Dawn's about to go down. It's taking a fair amount of damage, too, but it is retreating. It's getting out of there, making sure it doesn't actually die. While Yurga continues to build up... I mean, Yurga and Saab actually have a much stronger economy, at least for metal, than Anarchid and the Sponge. Anarchid and the Sponge have slightly stronger energy, but... Only in that they're not e-stalling. Saab is just ahead in terms of metal, and... It's just a matter of building up some energy to make up for that. To, rather work with that, and that'll do the trick. And yeah, Saab is building all these metal charges over to the northwest side of the map. And Anarchid's coming in with his Black Dawn once again. The Black Dawn hasn't really been repaired. Trying to get rid of more Glaives, but that's not going to help too much. Yeah, once again, not the most useful thing to do, I'm afraid. These Jethro's are... These Jethro's are about to go down to the Glaives, by the way. They are... If they are spotted, that's going to be it. Avenger coming in, and Jethro's going to decloak to get rid of that Avenger, and the Glaive's going to move in to deal with the... Well, actually, no, not going to deal with the Jethro's. That's odd. They're bound to. I mean, Anarch okay, Anarchid's commander, not upgraded, and Sponge's commander has no upgraded weapon. Both of them are using the standard pea shooter, but they are repairing that Black Dawn. They do have the Trident, or the Trident is up already. The Crane is out, coming up behind it. Trident's up just for support with the Black Dawn. Black Dawn moving back to be repaired by the Crane, and... Now we're seeing Glaives. Now we're seeing a more standard ground game from Anar from the Sponge. He actually already had some Glaives, but building more of those, keeping the center of the map for himself, and at the same time, we do have Sub coming in with a bunch of bombers, trying to snipe the commanders, trying to get both commanders at once. One of the bombers goes down before able to, being able to drop his payload. The other bomber, the other two bombers, able to hit Anarchid's commander without too much issue, but Anarchid is not even morphing his commander yet. So not the biggest deal. The Glaives not able to snipe, and moving away, trying to avoid that Black Dawn. Blackton once again scaring them off, but at this point, enough glaives are coming up that it's going to be pretty difficult to simply scare them off with just a Blackton. But they're going to be able to actually overpower the Blackton fairly soon. The Blackton continuing to get healed, and that's pretty much all that can be done at the moment. Now, oh, interesting. Yurga has a Jethro here on hold fire and hold position, but he is well aware of what's going on with this Blackton. Nice use of cloaking for scouting there. Kind of fortunate it hasn't actually been spotted yet, but yeah, Anarchid and the Sponge, not at all aware of this Jethro here. There's another Glaive over to the west and over to the south that they are also scouting things out. And Saab taking the southeast side of the map as well. He is just making sure to claim everything for himself. However, Yurika coming into the north, trying to get rid of the Sponge's Glaive. So the Sponge was raiding, or looking to raid. Actually not finding a whole lot, but did find the Glaives, and that's not going to work out well for him. So these Glaives from the sponge are not going to work out very they're not going to work at all the only advantage is that he did spot that glaive that being said this Jethro is still well aware of everything going on in the center here pretty much got a map hack going just for how much he knows and able to stop some of the expansion but I don't think he's aware of the southeast expansion or the northwest expansion I don't think he knows just how much Saab has taken of the map and this Black Dawn needs to retreat once again now Saab and Yurga have what do they got here Saab has actually going for a Cloaky Bot Factory, so both of them are going to be getting a pretty good presence on the ground. Anarchid, no Cloaky. In fact, Anarchid has not been producing at all. He's been building up more economy, trying to build it for the future, but not actually producing any any units. Building some cranes, that's about it. Now, Anarchid still working with the Blackstone, and has found the expansion! The expansion has been found. The expansion, unfortunately for, this, for Anarchid, is not going to go down too easily. And also, unfortunately for Anakid, a bunch of Jethro's are moving to intercept the Black Dawn. As well as... Okay, this vamp is going to do it in. That Black Dawn is done for. I would be very surprised if it survived. And no, it's not going to survive. There is no way it's going to survive. That... Actually, it almost survived the vamp, too. The vamp got killed in the process. But no, that Black Dawn is down. And I think with that, Anarchid's hopes at victory as well. Though, admittedly, the Sponge has still been able to get up a ground army in the meantime. And he is actually 
He's not doing the best job of dealing with this, but it's still... Oh, man, this is still going to be kind of problematic. I mean, the sponge not able to get through... That wasn't the best micro. He did have a lot of his glaives clumped up against a line of glaives. That doesn't work. I think the sponge really started to panic a bit there. Probably was trying to line move, but they hadn't quite gotten into the line before the attack started. Now, back here it looks like Anarchid going for heavy tanks. Giving up on gunships, going straight for heavy tanks. Knowing there's enough anti-air, that's not a bad idea. And, oh crap, I totally missed it. The sponge's commander has gone down. And it had an E-cell as well, so the sponge... He's basically three solars down in terms of energy. And given that Yurga has a fusion plant somewhere... Well, he's got enough energy. It looks like he has a fusion plant. I don't see it, though. Oh, no, never mind. I'm blind. There's the fusion plant. So, yeah, Yurga has a fusion plant. Saab has just a ton of solar plants around the map. And wind plants and everything. He's got tons of power and another... Well, not a snipe quite coming in, but he is scouting out with the bombers. Trying to figure out what to bomb out. Probably going to bomb out the heavy tank factory. And, no, going to bomb out the cloaky factory instead. Not quite killing it. 25 health left on the cloaky bot factory. Powerful blow, but not enough. Not quite the killing blow that's necessary. Now, Anarchid, on the other hand, is actually doing a pretty good job with Reclaim. So he's not totally behind an economy, but still. The fact is, Yurga and Saab are very much ahead in economy. The Sponge is the one who's behind an economy, actually. The Sponge has no, or few metal extractors. There's like three or four metal extractors. Five metal extractors. He has... Uh, really, that's about it. Five metal extractors and a few solar plants. Anarchid's getting quite a bit of reclaim, which is good. And actually, both Anarchid and the Sponge are accessing at the moment. Which is quite bad, because that means that really not a whole lot's going in to help... Like, they're actually not building units as quickly as they should be. At this point, yeah, Saab and Yurga already have twice the army. Anarchy and the Sponge, their only hope is good micromanagement, which so far, the Sponge has not necessarily shown perfect... He's not shown perfect micromanagement. He's shown good micromanagement, but like at this point, you pretty much need perfect micromanagement just to be able to deal with that army advantage. Granted, a lot of it is in air, but still... Now, if he manages to come back here and raid, if he survives this bomber attack, I don't know if that's going to work. I think the bombers are going to be able to hit individual glaives and pretty much have his army. But if he's able to come in and harass, double check in the southeast, looks like Anarchid's commander getting rid of Yurga's expansion attempt. Not bad. But these glaives, if they went in for a harassment attack, there'd be some hope. Especially if they got rid of the fusion plant. There'd be some hope. But at this point, they are trying to move into attack. They are... Coming in downhill, but not attacking near the hill, unfortunately, for them. So, they are going to... They're going to surround. That That is going to work, actually. That's going to work. Yes, the glaives are through here. And enough Jethro's to get... Well, to give that vamp a reason to run, but not quite kill it. So, Anakin and the Sponge still holding on tooth and nail, but... Man, this is not going to be easy. In fact, I think that this is still pretty much game for Saab and Yurga. I think they have it. Yes, yeah, Saab and Yurga get rid of Anarchid's commander... It's completely down. Anakin has very little build power right now. The Sponge able to deal with some of the forces here, but Saab coming in with Warriors, and that's going to seal it. Warriors and Rockos, and Zeus is from Zyurga. That's game. It's just a matter of Saab and Yurga moving in, and Anakin and the Sponge are going to throw in the towel. There is a Reaper coming in, so Anakin has one last-ditch attempt at this one. He's going to try. The Reapers are going to be able to deal with... deal pretty well, actually, with this. They have, like, well, they can probably one-shot or two-shot the Warriors, but that's not going to matter. And Anarchy and the Sponge throw in the towel, or think about throwing in the towel, at least. The Sponge definitely wants to resign. Anarchy has not yet chosen whether or not he's going to resign, but I think he is going to do so as well. And, yep, that is... that is game. So, game one goes to Saab and Yurga. So, Anarchy and the Sponge, they... They tried. I mean, it was certainly interesting. That Black Dawn, that Black Dawn death was huge, though. If that had been prevented, I think that there would have been a much easier way for it to go in Anakin and the Sponge's favor. But yeah, that was very much an all-in strategy. However, that's game one. You can do that sort of thing. Now, game two is going to be interesting. We'll see what happens there, and Anakin and the Sponge have to not die. So stay tuned for that. Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to... Game 2 of Saab and Yurga versus Anarchy and the Sponge. Going to be playing this on Comic Catcher Redux version 2, which we saw earlier, and which was definitely a map that favored, well, Anarchy and the Sponge at the time versus Magman. Well, it was the previous game, Magman and 
Mothmaster, and that was definitely that was definitely a map that gave Anakin and Sponge the advantage. Now, between Anakin, the Sponge, and Sob and Yurga, I think both of them are really good at handling large maps. This will really show how that works out, how much better each one is than the other at handling this sort of situation. But they're still getting started, still trying to figure out where to position themselves. Once that is done, we will have the game going. Just waiting for them to actually start up and then... Okay, there we go. Game is beginning. So, CCR version 2, we saw this earlier. Lots of metal. So, will last for a little while. Anyway, vehicle and heavy tank from Saab and Yurga. Vehicle and air from the Sponge and Anarchid, which really isn't surprising anymore. Anarchid seems to really like playing air. Though, well, we saw last time it worked out. I mean, it was a little bit tough, but it did work out. I expect that Anarchid's going to go for a comp snipe with that, going for bombers, getting trying to get air control first, assuming that Saab and Yurga are going to go for air early, but they are not. Saab and Yurga instead going for very early ground, getting a Kodachi early on, also getting some early Scorchers, but not going for air. So early Avenger is going to come up. Not going to be the most useful. I don't see any shadows being queued up yet, but once they are, then I imagine we're going to be very quickly seeing attacks on the commander. It's just not yet happened. We'll... That will come up when it comes up. It looks like that is actually what's coming up right now. Anarchid is queuing up another Avenger and then queuing up some bombers, and from there, that will definitely deal enough damage. If he, if he has four or five bombers, of course, that's what you pretty much need to do a comp snipe. At this point, Saab has not morphed, and neither has Yurga. Neither Saab nor Yurga have decided to morph their commander. They're both just sticking to level zero commanders, focusing entirely on getting economy structures rather than getting E cell. And Saab actually going for a very powerful harassment on Scorchers early on. Kodachi as well going in from the east side of the map, going to be probably attacking from behind to deal with this. But this is pretty big, actually. A dive coming in. A comm snipe dive, but not successful. Enough defending forces in the way. Anarchist commander lives to tell the tale of an unsuccessful comm snipe dive, or a comm snipe dive that was defended against. Nicely done there, Anarchid. So, Saab focusing a bit more on economy, getting his, his early raid did some damage, but not a huge amount. Looks like the sponge going for a counter raid. Yes, the sponge is definitely going for a counter raid. Coming in with four scorches of his own. Not sure if he's going to go for a comm snipe. No easy comp snipes. Actually, well, you know what? Yurga's is not too hard. But Sob's is going to be a little bit harder. He does have a defender being built up in a mountain. He does have a laser in his base. But I think that... Well, we'll see, actually. The Sponge not quite going for a revenge shot yet. At this point, Sob and Yurga are actually slightly behind in terms of economy. There's... Well, they would be. They evened out now. But it's basically 25 per team. Anarchid, however, does have a bit of reclaim to work with. And he is definitely taking advantage of that. But in terms of the base economy, Saab and Yurga are behind. Especially since now at this point, Saab is actually... Yeah, there, or so Yurga lost a metal extractor right there. I'm not sure to what exactly, but probably to Avengers. Most likely to Avengers. They are swooping around the map, dealing some damage, and looks like the sponge is about to send in an attack. Saab's command is right there. Three, three scorches is not very much for a dive, but he's going to go for it nonetheless. See how this works out. And level 0 commander actually is going to die to the three Scorchers. But like I said, that is a level 0 commander. The biggest loss is build power, not energy. So build power, definitely a big thing. But yeah, energy is what's going to do the trick. So now at this point, Saab is definitely going to have a hard time building up. That is one thing. He is going to be a bit slower for building up. And he is going to have a lot of reclaim, though. So he can easily make up for that if he uses the reclaim effectively. However, Anakin coming in with bombers... Dealing with the defensive structures while more Scorchers come in from Sponge. So, Anakin and the Sponge are definitely just going for aggressively. They do not want to even risk losing this match. They are just trying to kill everything quickly. And against Heavy Tank, that's not a bad idea. But yeah, they're trying to get rid of everything they can as quickly as they can. Now, Panther's coming in. Yurka coming in with some Panthers. Able to get rid of both Scorchers in one shot. More Scorchers are forthcoming, but still. At this point, Saab is not helping out the team too much. He will eventually, if he stays, if he keeps going like this, he will be able to help out the team. Because he's going to be able to rebuild, he's going to get more metal. He is expanding, he's definitely focused on 
getting the economy side going. If Yurga can defend, can stop these Scorchers from coming in, and also the Darts from coming in and harassing. Actually, are Sab and Yurga aware of this? I don't think they are. Oh, that Dart's just out of vision of this Mason. The Sponge actually able to see what's going on without... Or, not sure if he's able to see what's... Yes, he is able to see what's going on. The Dart has a large enough vision radius that he can actually see what's going on. So, at this point, now Sab and Yurga have become aware of this Dart here. But it's kind of late. And the Dart able to get rid of the Mason. While Scorcher is able to get rid of some of these Crashers that are roaming around the map trying to get rid of Anarchid's Air Force. So at this point, it's really going to come down to whether or not Yurga can successfully defend. Because Saab is starting to rebuild. He is still a bit behind, but his rebuilding is going fairly strong. He's got some construction over the southwest and... Or sorry, the center west, not quite southwest. Southwest of the north side, I guess. Anyway, he is getting some construction going. So Saab is definitely building up, but it's kind of tricky. Right now... Yurga is still needing to defend against this, and Yurga is able to do so. He has two Panthers, and those have been doing a pretty good job. Now, this Crasher, however, not quite so much. Double checking the base, we see that, well, more Avengers and Shadows are forthcoming. Really, the problem is going to be against the ground based anti air, because it doesn't look like any air switch is happening for either Yurga or Saab. They're just staying on ground, they're not going for the air. The air is Anarchid's domain right now, but at the same time, anti air is still something that's going to be quite powerful, and it looks like no, no Copperhead has been built quite yet. Yurga not going for dedicated anti air. he probably should, but he is not going to get a Copperhead. I don't know if he's going to get a Copperhead. He's not getting it right now. And Saab focusing on heavy Scorchers, trying just to go for a mass Scorcher push and break through that way, but unfortunately for him, the Sponge is already halfway there. He already has half a dozen Scorchers. Not a huge amount, but he can get more, obviously. He's going to be able to build more. He's getting a Caretaker to be able to build more, and that's a good timing, too, because Anakin and the Sponge are going to start losing metal if they're not careful. Panthers are actually doing a pretty good job taking the center of the map. In fact, Yurga is trying to get rid of these... Well, let's see he's trying to counter these Scorchers. These Scorchers are going to be able to harass effectively enough. They are getting slowed down a bit by the laser turret, but they are able to kill only one Scorcher ultimately going down, and... The Metal Extractor down as well. That Scorcher, however, goes down to Defenders. And Avengers as well taking a lot of damage. And Scorchers in the back. Oh my goodness, Sub doing what he did last time. Nice use of Scorchers here. Trying to get rid of this Air Factory. Is he going to be able to do it? And yes, he just got rid of the Air Factory, losing his Scorchers in the process. But Anarchid has no way of building more units at this point. He can build another Factory, but still no more Air Units. Now, of course, the Sponge does have a lot of Metal Sorry, does have a lot of Scorchers. Able to start getting rid of Yurga's Metal Extractors. Yurga has really started to take... He was taking the map pretty heavily. He still is, actually. But these Metal Extractors, unfortunately... That raid is going to stop here. The Laser Turret finishes off the last of the Scorchers, but that's quite a few. Yurga did lose quite a few Metal Extractors, but at the same time, he also built quite a few. Ultimately, no net loss. So the Sponge and Anarchid are still... Are starting to fall behind again. Anarchid does have enough reclaim that he can actually work from this. Getting some Caretakers as well. Reclaiming his Airplane Factory... Just to get himself a bit more economy. At the same time, we do have... Oh, for goodness sakes. I gotta look at that fix that. I don't know what's going on with this stupid chili chat widget. That hasn't happened before. I don't know why that's bugging out right now. But anyway. With... Also, I have no idea why the default is in the top center of the map. I never... So why is it the top center of the screen? That's the worst place for chat. But... UI design digressions aside... The Sponge doing a pretty good harassment job, getting rid of defenses, trying to break through Yurga's front. We've seen before that that's what you need to do in 2v2 is break through the front, and then from there you can start attacking, because there's not a, there are some defenses further back, but not a huge amount. And it looks like the Sponge going for a dive on this Panther, trying to get rid of it before it deals too much damage, and it is able to do so. That Panther goes down. The Sponge lost a couple Scorches in the process, but still, that was worth it to get rid of that Panther. And it looks like, at the same time, we have... Center of the map, Anarchid's commander coming under fire. Panther's trying to get rid of it, and they might be successful. Anarchid does have a heavy bot or heavy tank factory of his own, and he's definitely making use of it. And it looks like that Panther not quite able to kill the commander. Commander able to survive it at the same time. A welder from Anarchid just scouting out. Not able to do too much, probably trying to expand, but unable to successfully do so. And the sponge is retreating with the scorchers. Oh, he's regrouping with the scorchers. Okay, that makes more sense. Sponge's Scorchers are regrouping, and at the same time, Sob's 
Sob Scorches are taking a lot of damage from these Panthers here. Panthers are successfully kiting out the Scorches, but even then, the Scorches are actually able to do a lot of damage. That being said, the Sponge's own Scorchers coming in to deal with Yurga's front, finish it off, get rid of a lot of his power. Admittedly, Yurga does have a fusion plant. There's a fusion reactor up here for Yurga, and that is going to basically mean those solar plants were meaningless. Small amount of damage, but right now, the Sponge is just best served by trying to deal with every little bit he can, trying to avoid losing his units as well, so that Reclaim doesn't come in as come to bite him in the butt. But I think that it's going to be, well, still an even game. It's still actually anyone's game at this point. The players are fairly evenly matched. Saab has a weak army, but Yurga makes up for it, and Anarchy and the Sponge both have fairly strong armies together. And Anarchy has rebuilt the airplane plant, as well as having the heavy tank fax switch. And the Sponge is very much on the ball for going for raiding. Yurga also doing a nice raiding job here, but the Sponge has been really doing a consistently better job at this point. However, Saab is making up for Yurga's raiding by just going for it himself and doing basically the same thing that the Sponge is doing. So the Sponge and Saab very much do the same thing. Actually, no, Saab... No, the Sponge, sorry, the Sponge's Scorcher is moving out of position, retreating away from the Panthers, not able to really deal with them, trying to flank them now, but those Panthers have actually dealt a lot of damage. And the Sponge has to deal with this. At the same time, Anarchy has to deal with a bunch of Scorchers coming into his base. Shadow's trying to get rid of them, dealing a bit of damage, but they are not the best unit for this. The best unit would probably be Phoenixes, but Phoenixes are not very popular nowadays. And Anarchy loses his commander, well, just about to. There we go, loses his commander, getting rid of all of Sob's forces, all of Sob's Scorchers, but he can easily build more. Oh, he's not focusing on that. He's actually focusing on trying to take the air, getting a bunch of... Getting a bunch of Shadows, getting a bunch of Avengers, using them to take out the air, and also getting some Scorchers in the back to raid as well. So Sob... Saab doing what the Sponge was doing about five minutes ago. My goodness, it's only been 11 minutes in this game. He's doing what Saab was doing five minutes ago. And that is going to be very powerful. Now, the Sponge, his commander, not damaged, actually. Sp commander managed to avoid that. Not sure if that was the target, but... Yurga, on the other hand, coming around back. And these levelers are trying to do what they can against the Panthers, but it's not enough. They really are trying, but these Panthers... These Panthers have free reign. Anarchid's power is gone. Anakin's power infrastructure has just been destroyed, or it's getting destroyed. There's no way around it. And at the same time, Avengers to get rid of Anarchid's Air Force. I think Saab and Yurga are going to take this 2-0. Yeah, at this point, Anarchid has lost a ton of his energy economy. He's lost... I mean, he still has a lot of these solar plants, so he still has a fairly healthy economy, but he's lost a lot of his military, a lot of his economy. The back side of the base is completely exposed. Panthers are taking out a lot of the metal, and that's more important. And most importantly, Yurga and Sab have just... They have 100 metal between them. Anakin and the Sponge have... 60. Like, not to mention, at this point, Yurga's... No, Yurga is way ahead in terms of army. Sab has definitely got the right army composition, and even though he's behind in terms of metal cost, he is definitely making that metal pay off. More shadows coming in here. A few of them getting killed... But, or, no, not kill, just stop in midair. And Shadows are, well, Shadows coming in with, this Anarchist tra Shadows trying to get rid of Sob's harassment forces, but Sob's harassment forces are just too powerful. And that is game! Anarchist and the Sponge about to resign. It looks like they are indeed going to resign. Yes, both players vote to resign. That is game, that is match. Sob and Yurga win 2 nothing against Anarchid and the Sponge and move on to the finals. That was Oh, that was really nice. Well, nicely done for them. So Wow. That was that was an impressive match. Admittedly, rating was nice on both sides, but I don't think the Sponge like the Sponge did lose a lot to direct attacks. Sub I mean, admittedly, he didn't or Yurga, rather. Well, both Saab and Yurga didn't attack too much early on, but that harassment at the end was positioned just the right spot to avoid any counterforce. So that's basically it. So we're going to have the finals fairly soon. I think we're going to have the bronze match beforehand with Anakin and the Sponge versus... And I should probably point this out. Ivory King and Vistrisium... Oh, for goodness sakes. Oops. There we go. Ivory King and Vistrisium are... going to be fighting against Anakin and the Sponge... Well, Saab and Yurga are going to be going against Banana. I'm Banana King. So. 
Okay, Banana Island, Banana King are here. Not sure. I kind of want to do the bronze match first. So, I'll be back shortly, probably with a bronze match. If not, I'll let you know. It's just the finals. And I will be back shortly, so stay tuned.